The subject I am dealing with in this video is Sartre's phenomenology of the imaginary. Imagine you are walking through a zoo, what can you say a priori without you knowing exactly? You could now say that there are elephants in the zoo, but you could also think of it differently, for example a zoo without elephants, so the elephants in the zoo are not logically necessary. But what is logically necessary when imagining? That's what Sartre wants to find out in his book The Imaginary. What Husserl calls essential features, the fundamental properties of a phenomenon, is what Sartre calls characteristics. He believes that there are four characteristics of imagination, or better he writes about four of these in the book. The first characteristic is what Sartre calls, the idea is a consciousness. By this he means that the idea is an intentional awareness of something. He writes, an idea of a chair is not and cannot be a chair. The straw chair I'm sitting on, whether I'm aware of it or I'm imagining it, always remains out of consciousness. That should mean, even in the imagination, when you imagine a chair, you don't imagine a chair in your consciousness, but you imagine the chair in a room, for example in the living room. He goes on to write, but now, this is what reflection teaches us above all, my object of perception and my object of imagination are identical, regardless of whether I perceive this chair or imagine it, it is this straw chair on which I am sitting so, the first characteristic says that an identical object can be referred to in two ways. You can imagine or see the chair you are actually sitting on, but in both cases the chair is given differently. However, the chair is only the object of the imagination and not the imagination itself. Sartre continues, the word imagination, then, can only designate the relation of consciousness to the object. In other words, it is a particular way of appearing to consciousness that the object has, or, if you will, a particular way of presenting oneself to an object that consciousness has. Imagination is therefore a method of how to make an object conscious. Just as seeing is a method of making an object conscious, or hearing, for example. He also writes, indeed, the concept of mental imagination is a source of confusion. It would be better to say awareness of Peter as representation. Peter is just the example that Satter always uses in his examples. That is, translated to the chair, we can have an awareness of a chair through imagination, memory, or even desire. There are many ways of referring to the same object. So much for the first characteristic. Now we come to the second. This characteristic is called quasi-observation. If you imagine walking through the zoo, then this imagination allows you a quasi-observation. Quasi means when something seems to be the case. He writes, the simplest thing will be to compare the imagination with the term and with perception. Perception, understanding, imagining, these are in fact the three forms of consciousness in which the same object can be given to us. Of course, there are more than three, but Sartre only listed these because he related them to each other. To understand means to judge. You can make a judgment about something, for example that there are a lot of visitors at the zoo. You can perceive that there are many visitors in the zoo. And you can imagine that there are many visitors in the zoo. These three types are different. In perception, you observe the objects, which means you have the opportunity to learn something. Observing and perceiving, for Sartre, is determined by one characteristic, which is part of the second characteristic, namely that you are aware of something concrete and can examine it. When you perceive or observe a book, you can find out more about the book, for example its content. However, the term is different. When you hear the phrase I've read a book, you can't find out more about that book by observing it. Just as little can you find out anything concrete about the objects through judgment. When you make the judgment, there is a book on the table, you don't necessarily know which book is on the table. The consciousness of perception and imagination are concretions, they are concrete. You can only imagine a zoo, or, more simply, a chair that has concrete structural characteristics. When you imagine or see two chairs, you imagine or see them in relation to each other, they could be identical, one may be smaller, the other may be darker and so on. Imagination, however, is a kind of hybrid mode for Sartre, because in imagination, like in perception, you have consciousness, but like in understanding, you cannot learn by observation, which is the key point. Sartre argues that one cannot learn anything about the world by imagining. If you imagine going to the zoo again, you can't find out how much the entrance fee is, of course you can imagine an entrance fee, but you couldn't find it out, you just put an entrance fee into your zoo imagination by yourself. That's what Sartre means when you say you can't learn anything. He writes, in contrast to this, there is a kind of essential poverty in the imagination. So that's what he means by quasi-observation, it's an observation because it's concrete, but it's also not an observation because you can't learn anything. The fact that we cannot learn anything in the imagination is characterized, among other things, by the fact that, in contrast to perception, 
we cannot be surprised in the imagination. For example, in your imagination you cannot be frightened. If you imagine yourself in the zoo, then it will not surprise you if there are no elephants or if you are attacked by a lion. This is not a psychological finding, but logically necessary, mathematics of consciousness, as Husserl would say. The third characteristic reads, the consciousness of the imagination posits its object as nothing. The zoo you imagine does not exist. Sartre says there are four ways in which something can be imagined that is not. He writes, this act can take four and only four forms. These four forms are non-existent, absent, existent elsewhere, and neutralized. Non-existent means that you can imagine a Pokemon, for example, and you know that it doesn't exist. Then you can imagine something absent, for example you can imagine Mike Tyson, who is someone existing, as absent. You can imagine an object as existing elsewhere, for example you imagine that your house key is on the moon. Neutralized means that you can imagine something as not existing, for example that you can imagine that your house key is no longer there. There has been a lot of discussion about these four forms, you can think about it what you want, I just wanted to mention them. So much for the third characteristic. Now I come to the last characteristic, which is, spontaneity. By this Sartre means the availability of the object. You decide what you imagine. Sartre says, I am the master of my imagination. You have full freedom and power over your imagination. The imagination is a consciousness sui generis. Consequently, this means that you don't see films but imagine them, since what is portrayed in the film is not really there. Seeing presupposes existence something that is really there. And if you watch, or to stick with Sartre, imagine Star Wars, for example, then you don't believe that the Death Star is present or that you are in the world of Star Wars. So much for Sartre's phenomenology of imagination. The next video is about Sartre's phenomenology of image perception. Thanks for listening, and till next time.